So anyway, why the Cultural Revolution? It has so many aspects. Uh, you see, uh, uh, the youth must be provided with a revolutionary experience. They are the successors of the revolutionaries. And what kind of revolutionary experience can you provide? No? There is no enemy to shoot. No? There is no... Uh, uh, there is no more private property to seize, no? So it is in the realm of, uh, of culture where the youth could have revolutionary experience. So it was said, no? You can confiscate, uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can confiscate the properties and the weapons of the forces, but you cannot confiscate the, the, the ideas and the old habits, no? So, uh, the uh, the youth must be made conscious of these things, uh, and uh, they must be conscious of uh, taking the stand viewpoint and uh, methods of uh, the working class, uh, materialist dialectics. They must learn that, you know? and uh, they must serve the people. You know? you, you see, youth. Uh, youth becomes an instrument of provisionism when you know the very children of uh, workers and peasants becomes the agent of the becomes the agent of provisionism and the restoration of the bourgeoisie because uh, if they don't uh, take the stand of the proletariat they think of themselves as professionals they they, they go through school so they will have high, good positions in the professions, in the economy, or in the party. And they, all they think is, is, uh, is rising and uh, pleasing themselves and rewarding themselves materially. And the idea of serving the people uh, under the leadership of the working class is lost. No? So, um, it was once said that uh, uh, the ninth category, that's the petty bourgeois, <laughs> uh, is uh, filthy in the sense that, you know, it, it is selfish, it uh, only minds itself and that, that had to be combated, you know. Uh, when you can prevent, you, you, the kind of intelligentsia, professionals and technicians you produce must be proletarian. No? That's the... Um, uh, for the socialist system to continue, so the youth must uh, must uh, uh, always be uh, mindful of of this uh, proletarian outlook, and uh, the youth was, uh, went to the countryside to work with the peasants and to learn the conditions of the peasants. They they also went to the factories to learn the conditions and to feel like the workers uh, by going to the workers. Uh, the, the idea is to make the youth close to, to the working people, not divorced from them. So that's, that was an objective of the, of the uh, cultural revolution. The, the cultural revolution was a, was, a, was a revolutionary process for the entire a socialist society, and I cannot explain it in just <laughs> in just a few minutes. So anyway, and but I have uh, I have already uh, I have already uh, pointed out certain basic principles: leadership of the working class, the youth as successors, and uh, again with ex revolutionary experience in cultural revolution. Uh, uh, serving the people and going to the people uh, and then uh, you see um, even if uh, even as uh, the s s uh, socialist revolution had already advanced in China there were still old habits you know, and old patterns you know, uh, that had to be you know there were still uh, uh, artistic works in which the heroes are uh, uh, not the workers and peasants uh, and the red soldiers, but uh, uh, in the in Beijing opera they still have the uh, 
there still as main characters the uh, um, uh, uh, the so-called uh, people of high society, um, and so that had to be revolutionized. And um, it, it was pointed out that uh, uh, it is not enough to mine what is more, what is the mode of production and mode of production, you know, the forces of production and their relations. Of course, it's necessary to see to it that the relations of production are ruled, are, uh, are ruled by the, uh, the workers no? and peasants. But then um, the superstructure of society must also be revolutionized and that could be more important uh, uh, because um, the reactionaries uh, go to the cultural field you know, in order to fight uh, the, the, the socialist line. And if the working class party does not mind, uh, does not care about the, the uh, superstructure, particularly the cultural field, then the reactionaries would have, uh, would have a highly influential field from which to attack the socialist life. So uh, that was pointed out. And in every kind of struggle, be it a struggle to maintain the socialist economy, uh, maintain uh, the socialist art and culture, um, the key point is the class struggle. Uh, people must uh, uh, adopt the proletarian viewpoint and conduct the struggle against tendencies that run counter to the proletarian and socialist life. So that was the message of the Cultural Revolution. <clears throat> you know, um, if there is no the, the Cultural Revolution has a large significance, a significance that is also far-reaching. Uh, you see, if you just think of socialism in terms of public ownership, of the means of production, as in the Soviet Union, uh, if you are told by anti-socialist elements, oh, but the Soviet Union becomes so uh, powerful economically and militarily, but then uh, pretty soon, uh, after a few decades, uh, the uh, working class leadership was thrown away. No? Uh, Although in China itself, the GPCR was not successful in the sense of, of, of uh, prevailing even after the death of Mao. But at the least, you have a theory and practice uh, by which to counter the threat of revisionism. And uh, that is the, that's something important. Um, there may be new conditions later on, uh, especially in the field of technology, but the, basically, uh, you have to handle the class struggle. The classes, classes and class struggle persist even in social society. Not until you reach uh, communism would, you, uh, would, you, would there be classlessness, no? Um, and usually, the trick of the, the trick of the revision is, you know, uh, because you know the uh, special characteristic of the petty bourgeois is uh, to assume a classless viewpoint. It's bourgeois, although it's small one, no? but the petty bourgeois generalizes abstract things in such a way that there are no classes. Eh? When you read a bourgeois constitution, eh? all individuals are equal. No? That's the proposition, and you know. Uh, the capitalist individuals are mixed up with the worker individuals. <laughs> in a bourgeois constitution, like probably the constitution here, uh, and in the constitution of the Philippines, oh, there is no, there is no recognition of imperialist countries uh, dominating uh, uh, the lesser countries like the Philippines, and then. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, as I said, in the consideration of rights, it's about individuals that mix up, uh, in the abstract, mixing up the, the exploiting, the members of the exploiting classes and the members of the exploited classes. And, uh,